In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me, and I in you, and you will produce much fruit. Each week, the vine is a worship opportunity brought to you by St. Andrew United Methodist Church to help you stay connected to Jesus Christ, who is the true vine. I hope that you're blessed by our time together this week. Merry Christmas. I'm Pastor Jonathan, and I want to welcome you to our online Christmas Eve service on this holy night as we celebrate the birth of Christ, that there is a light that shines in the darkness, a light that continues to shine in us and through us, the hope of the world. I hope that in this season, whatever you might be facing in life, that in these moments you might sense the hope, joy, peace, and love that comes in knowing Jesus Christ. I hope that you're blessed by our time together this week as our music director, Megan Bailey, plays an instrumental piece for you. And as I share a message with you called, Why the Shepherds? Before we turn to that, I want to let you know that I would love to absolutely get to know you. Whether you live in Florida or Australia or right here in St. Albans, if I haven't met you, I hope that you'll send me a message through our church's Facebook page. Or you can email me directly at jonathan.wvumc at gmail.com. I also want to invite you to visit our church's website where you can find out more about St. Andrew United Methodist Church, about our ministries and ways that you can grow and serve. There's even an online option for online giving so that you can partner with us in our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I hope that you're blessed by our time together this evening.
on this holy night, I'd like to take an opportunity to let you know that our church loves you. And I can say that even if we don't know you, because I trust that if we had the opportunity to know you, that we would love you. And if there's a way that we can serve you or connect with you or support you, I hope that you'll let us know. And until then, I'd like to take just a moment to lift you in prayer during this season of Christmas. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray? Loving and merciful God, we feel the warmth of your love. We come humbly before you now, knowing that you have made the greatest sacrifice so that you can call every single one of us your children. God, I thank you for each person who's listening right now. Thank you that they're taking the time and making their time in, in this busy season to hear from you, to allow your word to speak to them anew. And whatever each person might be facing, whatever challenges or crises or whatever joys, whatever they might be facing, God, I pray that in this season that they would know that they are not alone, whether they're facing illness or struggles with their personal lives or their finances, whatever it might be, God, we know that life can be so difficult, but your presence gives us the, the assurance of knowing that we are never alone, and that is the hope and the promise of Christmas. We pray, God, that you would heal us and our world of our brokenness and our grief and our pain and give us hope and life and joy and peace. May each person who's listening now be blessed and may your spirit inspire us to go out into the world to be your hands and your feet, the living presence of Christ. And it's in his name we pray these things. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. 
that Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. In a previous church setting, there was a young man in my congregation by the name of Jake. He was a young adult, and Jake had autism. He may have been one of the sweetest people I have ever met in my entire life. Every time I'd see him, Jake would approach me, give me a hug. He'd lock eyes with me and say, Pastor Jonathan, I love you. Jake was faithfully at church. He always had a smile on his face. He was always looking for a job. And so I decided to give Jake an official position. His name would be printed in the bulletin along with the ushers and greeters every Sunday. Jake was our bell ringer. He would stand in the foyer of the church every Sunday morning and at 10 o'clock, he would ring the bell that would echo through the community. And after he rang the bell, he would come over and stand to my right, shoulder to shoulder, and continue shaking people's hands as they walked in. I would shake a hand, then he would shake a hand. And one Sunday, for one reason or another, I had stepped away from my spot. And when I came back, Jake was standing in my spot. And so I stood in what was traditionally his spot, next to him, to his right. And he turned to me and he said, Pastor Jonathan, I'm standing here shaking everyone's hand so that they know that everyone is welcome at our church. Now, I'm pretty sure that Jake was just telling me that he knew that he was being a greeter. I don't think that in those moments he realized that he was saying something prophetic and profound, that he was becoming the face of our congregation, a place of inclusion where everyone was welcome. He was the first face that people saw when they walked in the doors. In the story of Jesus' birth, we have all kinds of different characters. When we look at a nativity scene, we see magi, whom we traditionally call wise men. Of course, there's Mary, Joseph, baby Jesus. They're surrounded by various animals. There's an angel or two. And then, of course, there are these shepherds. Usually at least a few with a a shepherd's hook. And this year, as I was reading this passage of Scripture, and I've got to confess that as a preacher, trying to come up with a new perspective every year on the same text is kind of a challenge. I think this is the 15th year in a row that I've preached from Luke chapter 2. And I wondered, what is here that maybe I've glossed over in the past? What's something new that I've never really noticed? And I began to realize that logically and, and functionally, the shepherds are kind of unessential to the story. At the very beginning, we find that An angel appears to Mary. Gabriel, the angel, appears to Mary and gives her this great revelation of who she is and of what she's going to do. A revelation of who she's going to give birth to. And so the shepherds, they don't really come bringing new information. In fact, the information that they receive from the angels is much less than what the angels say directly to Mary in Luke chapter 1. And it made me wonder, why did the angels even appear to the shepherds? 
Why didn't they just bypass them completely? Because if I understand this correctly, it sounds like the angels appear to the shepherds, and the shepherds go and tell Mary and Joseph and anyone else who may have been there what they've heard and what they've seen. It seems like they're glorified middlemen. They're just passing along a message that they've heard. Why do the shepherds even need to fit into the story? They're in the story to let everyone know that they're welcome, that everyone is welcome. You see, Mary has received a divine revelation, but the shepherds, they become witnesses. They become the first people to witness and experience the kind of inclusion that the Christ child brings into the world. They come to let Mary know that because of her son, because of this baby that she's just given birth to, that everyone is welcome. They've confirmed what the angel told her months and months and months earlier. That's why the the shepherds are in this story. They have experienced the love and acceptance and the warmth that Christ brings into the world. And Mary gets to see it happening real time in a really tangible kind of way. And the Gospel of Luke tells us that Mary pondered these things and she treasured them in her heart. You know, it seems like sometimes most of us want to hear from the angels. Most of us would really like it if we could receive some kind of a divine revelation that would put to rest our doubts and fears, the concerns that we have, the questions that we have about God and evil and suffering and, and why things, bad things happen to good people. All of those questions that we might have, those big questions, wouldn't it be great if an angel would just appear to us and kind of unpack it and explain it and smooth it all over so that we could really have peace in our lives? But I think the same is true for most of us, that God doesn't necessarily send angels. God sends shepherds. God sends the people who have witnessed and experienced that love, that acceptance, that inclusion. They become the messengers. They become the people who pass on the news. And it's in their lives, the the people that we might least expect, the people that might tend to, to get looked over, they're the ones who can sometimes keep us centered, keep us grounded, keep us focused and reminded of what the good news of Jesus Christ is really all about. It's not always about having these powerful, profound religious experiences. The most fundamental message of the gospel is that everyone is welcome. That's the message of the first Christmas. That's why the shepherds are in the story. In some ways, I find this kind of a little, a little bit of a relief, I guess. Because most of us probably see ourselves as just ordinary people. Maybe we don't feel like that we have much to offer. Maybe sometimes we even struggle with how to articulate our faith, how to put into words what we believe and why we believe it. But the truth is, the world doesn't necessarily need that message from us. They don't need answers and and explanations. They need witnesses. They need witnesses who have experienced 
the love and inclusion. They need witnesses who trust and believe that the Christ was born so that all would be welcome. We don't have to to be the most polished speakers, the smartest people, the most influential or persuasive people. That's not what God is calling us to do. God is simply calling us to bear witness, to let the world know that Christ has come for everyone, that no one has been left out, that everyone is welcome, that everyone is included. And so I want to challenge you this Christmas season. Whatever you might be feeling, whatever you might be sensing, experiencing, to pause for a moment. Maybe you haven't had any angels. The Greek word for angel is angelos, which can either be translated angel or messenger. Maybe you haven't had any divine messengers with bright lights and grand wings or anything that we might imagine. But I'm confident that God has at least sent the shepherds into your life. People have borne witness of who God is and God's love and the good news that everyone is welcome. I hope that in these moments that you'll take inventory of your life, you'll consider maybe the shepherds that you've overlooked. And my hope and my prayer is that each and every one of us would be humbled and inspired to walk away, knowing that whatever our station in life might be, that God can use us to be messengers, that God can use us to be witnesses, that God can take our experiences no matter how little or how big. And God can use us to bear witness to the world that everyone is welcome. That's the story of Christ. That's the story of Christmas. Thanks be to God. Amen.